What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome to the second episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the like button because that really does go a long way in helping out the channel. The podcast is now available on Spotify and AM.FM. Uh, the video always comes out first, but the audio should be distributed shortly. So first topic today is TJ Maxx. In the last episode, I talked about Gap shutting down some stores and putting a focus on e-commerce. And when talking about them, I talked about TJ Maxx losing uh, $214 million in Q2. And Ernie Herman, CEO of TJX, said back in June, strategically, nothing will change. We will not look to e-commerce as our major leverage point to get us through COVID and out to the other side. So you guys know how I feel about e-commerce. The pandemic has exacerbated the need for all businesses, in my opinion, to have an online presence. Well, surprise, surprise, now it sounds like TJ Maxx is taking baby steps to have an online presence in their business. Recently, in their Q3 earnings report, they beat analyst expectation. Net income rose 4.6% to $866 million from $828 million a year ago. And earnings per share was $0.71 cents compared to the expected $0.40 cents per share. So my thoughts on TJ Maxx today are positive as they announced that they'll be taking the home goods brand online. They said, we believe the launch of homegoods.com next year could expand the consumer base and attract a younger consumer. In our view, the home category translates better online versus apparel and has the potential to be more impactful to TJX. So if you understand the TJ Maxx brand, what they try to encourage is the in-store treasure hunt for the most part. But I think it's a good idea that they're um, starting to kind of branch off into that online uh, e-commerce with the home goods brand. To me, it just seems like the logical thing to do. That's right, Financial has officially partnered up with Webull. Use the link in the description to receive four free stocks when you open up your new brokerage account. All new U.S. investors will receive four free stocks valued up to $3,700 when they open up a new account and deposit over $100. And second, Webull Cryptocurrency has officially launched, so you can now trade cryptocurrency on Webull with zero commission. Next up, let's talk about Sony's PlayStation 5. This has been a wild year for business. If you're on social media at all, then you know just how big of a deal the PlayStation 5 was. I mean, seriously, there's been memes and long-running jokes all over the internet. But anyhow, Sony reportedly sold 118,085 PlayStation 5 units between November 12th and November 15th, which is a third of their PlayStation 4 sales over the launch weekend. So you would think that everyone being stuck inside would mean people want to purchase more video games, right? Well, demand isn't the problem here. It's actually supply. Yes, Sony was supply constrained at the time of the release. It's actually just been a very wild year for business this year, like I said. Forgive me if I'm saying his name wrong, but Sirkan Toto, an industry consultant based out of Tokyo, said that um, the cause for the supply constraint Uh, to Sony was pretty much the pandemic. On the other side of things, people are reselling PlayStation 5s for wild amounts. I read that one reseller bought 3,500 PlayStation 5s using a bot. You can find PlayStation 5s on eBay reselling for around $1,000. The PlayStation 5's retail price starts at $399 for the digital version and $499 for the disc version. So you can only imagine how much that reseller did in revenue. If he sold 3,500 of those for $1,000, that's about $3.5 million in revenue. And I'm not talking about profit. Obviously, he has to pay shipping costs, and obviously, he has to subtract the cost of the goods uh, sold. But seriously, just think about it. Someone's making that type of money from not really doing anything. You guys, don't overpay for a PlayStation 5. Just be patient. Eventually, Sony will produce more and they'll release more. It's not the worst thing in the world to not have the gaming system right away. After all, it would probably make you less productive. I kind of want to get one myself, but I just don't have time for it right now. Last subject of the day, Tesla versus x So you guys know that I'm a big Tesla Elon Musk fan. I'm also heavily invested in a competitor, Neo, because I'm a big William Lee a Neo fan as well. So with that being said, being an EV investor, I try to follow this sector pretty closely. Well, as of lately, things are heating up in the EV world. 
For backstory and context, Tesla and Elon Musk believed that an, a former autopilot engineer at Tesla who quit and went to work for Xpong stole their autopilot source code. The company has filed lawsuits against Xpong. Tesla also made accusations against its former head of autopilot who went to go start his own company, but eventually they ended up dropping the lawsuit. And a former ex-Apple engineer was also accused of doing the same thing when he went to go work for Xpong. Now I'm not here to say that Xpong stole or uh, attempted to steal the secret sauce from Tesla. All of this is allegedly. You guys can uh, draw your own conclusions. But what I will say is that both companies operate in a space where talent and employees are very scarce. People jump from company to company all the time in this arena and I can see how um, that could be problematic with innovative companies. So on Saturday, yesterday, Xiao Pong, the ex-Pong CEO, posted something on social media and this is what he said. I would like to say that the rumor mongering has long proved that you can't be any competitor. Starting next year in the Chinese autopilot field, you have to be prepared to be beaten by us to find out where the East is. As for the international market, we will meet. So some pretty choice words from the Xpong CEO. Yesterday, Xpong also revealed their next generation autopilot technology, which is LiDAR based. LiDAR is very complicated. I'm not gonna get into all of it in this podcast, and I'm certainly no expert on it myself, but almost every self-driving company is using LiDAR at this time with Tesla being the exception. Tesla used to use LiDAR in the past, but they ditched it. In the past, Elon Musk said that uh, LiDAR is useless and they wouldn't even use it if it was free. And we all know that Tesla is the car company with the most data from real world driving, but their approach to self-driving is vision technology. But this is basically just a form of artificial intelligence that trains the computers in the cars to understand the visual world. But back to the story, Tasha Keeney of ARK Invest made a tweet yesterday. She said, why is Xping using LiDAR? Big deviation from copying Tesla. Xping says it will greatly improve accuracy. I believe it, but can severely limit scalability for their autonomous approach. Did they realize they couldn't make their Tesla copy approach work? Now, Elon Musk actually responded to her tweet. They have an old version of our software and don't have our NN inference computer. And I'm sure this is what prompted the Xpong CEO to hop on social media. Honestly, guys, the future of autonomous driving is really tricky. Elon Musk could be completely right, and in 10 years, we all laugh at the thought of LiDAR. But on the other hand, maybe both technologies could have practical applications. I sure hope that LiDAR is a very meaningful solution because I'm heavily invested in NEO. But that's going to be it for this one. I want to know what you guys think. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. Free Discord in the description. Make sure to join that. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching or listening.